welcome to my channel I'm Jennifer and this is Olivia and this video is all about how we started Olivia's weaning journey so we started weaning but I remember just thinking like where do I start when do I start and it's recommended that you wait till the baby's six months before you start weaning but I know people that have weaned as early as four months and I think as a parent, you just know when your child is ready. A few ways to know if they're ready is, one, they can hold their head up themselves. So you can sit them in a high chair and you can feed them. And you might also find that once you've dropped like your night feed and your baby's sleeping through, that suddenly they start waking in the night and they're hungry again. And that's normally a sign that they're ready for food. But I think the biggest one is that they are just interested in everything that you eat. <laughs> if you're eating something, they're trying to reach out and grab it. They want to put it to their mouth. They're looking at your food. I remember one day, Olivia was just like sucking her lips looking at food. And I was just like, she is so ready for this. <laughs> so we started weaning at five and a half months because that's just when Olivia was ready. But then I was like, do I do purees or do I do baby led weaning? I'm just so scared about choking, so I'm sticking with purees, but we have introduced a few like finger foods, just so that Olivia can feel the food, enjoy touching it, holding it, and just trying to feed herself and putting it to her mouth. So when I started weaning, I just did one meal a day to start with. So I did baby rice for two days, and then the rest of the week I just did vegetables. So we had carrot, broccoli, sweet potato, normal potato, parsnip. Because someone said to me, if you start off with vegetables, they won't get that sweet tooth straight away. So that's what I did. The best thing to do is to wait for your baby to open their mouth before you offer the food. Then the second week I did breakfast and lunch. So she had fruit in the morning and vegetables for her lunch. The fruit, Olivia's tried apple, pear, peach, mango and banana and we also did banana mashed with a little bit of avocado which was really good too sometimes i would just give her fruit on its own like pureed fruit or other times i would mix fruit into a little bit of baby porridge and she really loved that even if it's something that you don't like the look of just be really happy, smiley, and just be like, well done. Obviously, you want them to try and enjoy food. And if you're like, Ugh, they're going to feel that way too. Then the third week, I still stuck with only breakfast and lunch, but I mixed things up a little bit. So once I knew she liked a few of the flavours, I'd put like cauliflower and broccoli together or carrot and sweet potato together and just sort of gave her another taste. If you've got a baby that likes to grab the spoon, you can also give them their own one to hold and it just stops them trying to grab your one. There you go. <laughs> don't worry if they don't eat too much in this first stage. It's more about first taste. You like that? <laughs> it may take some time before your baby accepts certain flavours, but just keep offering it to them because sometimes it takes a few attempts. So I said I like to give Olivia a little bit of finger food as well, just to encourage her to like self-feed. Um, she's tried a little bit of avocado, but that was quite slippery. <laughs> and kept, she kept dropping it. She also tried a little bit of banana. Um, but we also really like these. So these are the organic finger foods. These are pea puffs. And we also like the Ella's Kitchen. These are tomato and leek melty puffs. But these are really good because they just melt in her mouth, but they're really easy for her to hold. These are really good. They're from six months, but there's really nothing in them. There is just dried green peas and corn. That's it. A little tip when it comes to weaning is if you're making all the food yourself, every now and again, try your baby on a shop-bought version. The reason why I say is that babies can get so used to home cooking that say you're out, it's an emergency, you need to feed your baby something like this, they might not accept it. So it's good to sort of vary it a little bit and then you've always got a backup. These are the Ella's Kitchen ones. I've always found these really good, but I know there's lots of other brands out there now and they're all really good these days. Most of them are organic, like these are. And a lot of them, they, well, they never have any nasties in them. And a lot of the ingredients are just what I'd make in my home cooking anyway. 
It's recommended at six months that you introduce your baby to a sippy cup. This is a little Dr. Brown one that we got and it's meant to be better for their tea. So I always offer this to Olivia after every meal with a little bit of water in. <laughs> she really likes it. <laughs> She's even tried doing it herself. <laughs> Milk is still really important in this first stage of weaning because when they're having food, it's not really about how much they have. It's more just them getting used to the first taste. And then what I normally do is just wait an hour after she has her milk before I offer her any food. When it comes to what you need for weaning, these are a few of my favorite products. So I thought I would just show you. So starting with this little bowl here, this is a Vital baby bowl that I got from Boots. I really love this because I find it's just really easy to hold when feeding Olivia. But what's great about it is it comes with a lid, so it's great for on the go. And it also comes with this little spoon that you clipped in the top. And I love this spoon because it's a really soft sort of silicon ended spoon. And because I like that so much, I actually bought some more spoons like that. Again, this is a really soft one. This is Boots own brand. I think you can get like a pack of three of these. And then I also picked up some of these munchkin spoons as well. These are really long, so they're quite good for weaning. And it's a nice small little spoon as well. So I find both of them have been really good. Obviously, weaning can be very messy, so you might need some bibs. We did have one like this to start with. This is a newbie one, and it's like that sort of molded silicon, but it's actually really heavy, and I just found it was a little bit too much around Olivia's neck. So we've recently switched to something like this. This is another plastic. It's easy to wipe, but it's so much thinner, so I feel it's a lot lighter on her. But what's really good is it's got the little pouch so it can collect any food that drops, but it comes with poppers on the side, so you can open it right up and just wipe it clean, and then fold it back up and you're good to go for the next time. Because I find anything else like this, it can sometimes trap food and it's quite hard to clean in these bibs. So this one is really good. This is a newbie converter bib, which I got from Boots. This is the Philips Aven Steam and Blender. I love this machine. I had it when I had Ralph when I was weaning him. So I'm using this second time round because it just makes life so much easier. You don't have to get anything like this. You can literally use a saucepan and a handheld blender, but I do love this machine. So the way it works is you put your chopped up fruit or your vegetables, whatever you're making in the jug, and then you put the lid on and you turn it up that way, clip it in and put your water in the back there for your steamer and then you just turn it on to steam when it's done it will bleep and when it's finished you can just flip it over because you've got the blade already in the bottom and you turn it to blend it's one pot no mess i just find that this has made life so much easier so once you've blended all your food, you're going to need something to store it in. And this ice cube tray is brilliant. This is a Annabelle Carmel's one that I got off of Amazon. It's got nine trays in it, which is perfect for batch cooking. And it's like a silicon make. So once your food is frozen, it's really easy to just push your ice cube out. It also is the perfect size. All these little pots are kind of the size that you want to give your baby. They recommend about two tablespoons, which is probably what is in there. So it's already sort of measured out for you. We also really like these little newbie pots. So they just come as individual ones. They've got another sort of silicon bottom, so they're easy to push up when your food is frozen. And this is a Tommy Tippy one, which is really good because the lid is attached because I am always losing the lids. So that one is really handy. A little tip when you're batch cooking is to get yourself a whiteboard marker because when you put these things in your freezer, you always forget what you've made, especially if you've made loads of different dishes. So if you get your pen, you can write on the lid what is inside. That way, when you go to your freezer, you'll know what you're taking out. And when you've finished with it, you can just wipe it away. There's no right or wrong way to wean in. I think we all do it slightly different, but it's just all about first taste. Don't worry about how much they're eating at this stage. It can get a little bit messy, but just remember it's meant to be fun. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. One more thing. <laughs> You'll know when you started weaning. Poo wee. <laughs>